I am at InterSolar and uh, Smartery 2019. I have now Mr. Damien Miller, the CEO of Orb Energy. Welcome to Smart Sustain. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. One lakh seventy customers in that seventy-five megawatt of rooftop solars. Yeah. In that five fifty-two only SMEs. Why only SMEs? Uh, SMEs are a very very good segment. About forty percent of India's industrial output is delivered by SMEs. But SMEs have a hard time finding uh, good uh, access to both finance as well as product. So as a company, we bring both. We bring the financing, we bring the solar system. And uh, SMEs, in that sense, are very appreciative of having the uh, total package on the doorstep. Okay. And you have this uh, collateral free loans. Yeah. Usually, any industries, CapEx is the biggest problem. So you are solving that problem. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Yeah, we determine that really you know, as a solar company, we're in a good position to be able to offer a collateral free loan. We see the value of the solar asset itself. Uh, so uh, many banks won't do this, but we will do it. Um, and it also is key for an SME. I mean, he wants to keep his collateral just for his core business. Uh, he wants solar, but he doesn't want to tie up collateral for the solar. So this is a way of encouraging an SME to take a loan for solar, which otherwise he might not be able to take. And talking about finances, like, you know, like even the industry, solar industries also want to finance this at all. So just tell me, what is your thoughts on the financing sector itself? Like, is is yeah. the government doing anything about financing? Because one thing, without financing, the industry will not grow. Yeah. Like other sectors has a lot of financing. What about uh, the renewable energy? Sure. So I think very specifically, SMEs will s struggle to get finance because many of them, as we just discussed, are already used their collateral. Banks will give them loans without collateral. So it's particularly hard for them to get a solar system. Uh, so in that sense, finance is critical. Uh, we bridge that gap by developing our own in-house finance. We give three to four year loans. We take a 25% down payment and that enables them to take it. Now, uh, in, the, in the market, there's not a lot else, to be honest, for SMEs right now. So what we would encourage the government to do is make uh, rooftop solar for SMEs, a priority sector uh, loan, and also enable vendors like us to take that money and pass it on to SMEs. I think the key now is how do we really make sure the money starts finding its way to SMEs. So all the SMEs out there, look at Diamond is funding non-collateral free loans <laughs> for you. Uh, and uh, talk about money, yeah. like uh, Shell has invested, uh, Shell New Energies has invested a good 20% when the markets, overall markets and industry is dull and especially renewable energy is in the bad shape, you can see the response is not so much. So how do you, do, what is your take on that? Like, no, isn't it a, a, a particularly for ORB energy and uh, renewable energy in general? How is it a positive uh, thing for ORB yeah. and uh, renewable energy? Well, absolutely. I mean, Shell investing in us is an extremely positive thing. We're very happy, we're very proud of it. Um, I think for the industry as a whole, it's good that Shell is back in the industry. So Shell also has made an investment in clean tech solar. So I would say overall, it's a good thing that Shell starts to come in. Obviously, the nice thing about Shell is they have a very long-term perspective. They think in terms of the next 20, 30 years. It's not like private equity, which is a, has a time frame of four to five years. So that is really what renewables needs. As you say rightly, that now is a bit of a downturn. So we have to ride out the downturn and you have to get ready for the upturn. And uh, having someone who's long-term patient like Shell is perfect. What do you think are the challenges for the renewable energy, particularly solar energy? Uh, you know, policies, of course, is one thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other, other problems also, are, net metering is also an issue, like yeah. uh, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra and other places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think uh, is, uh, is, uh, is the future ahead of uh, solar energy? I think the biggest issue is that DISCOMs are uh, struggling because they feel like the rooftop uh, CNI uh, solar uh, systems are basically taking away some of their best customers. I think this really calls into question the whole cross subsidization of tariffs from CNI to residential because that's why the discoms are so upset. If discoms could charge residential a bit more, then they probably would be okay. But because most of their money comes from the CNI customers, that's the challenge. So I think it's a big, again, it enters into a very much bigger, wider political discussion. Your other main uh, USP is your uh, PV manufacturing. Yeah. You already have 50 uh, megawatt per year. 60, yeah. 60, okay. Yeah. 
So what are your future plans? Are you planning to expand it and what are the future plans for that? Yeah, we would love to expand it. Right now, because of the downturn, we find the capacity is just right. Well, you see, we're different. all of our product goes into our projects. So we, we, what we make, we sell as part of an integrated system to an SME. Um, so right now, the size is fine. But next year is a new year, and let's look. We're looking for the uptick, and if it's, the industry starts to grow, then we're ready to uh, double the plan. Another thing is like the after sales. A yeah. lot of fly-by-night uh, yeah, yeah. place have come in and uh, gone. People have invested a lot of money, uh, the residential, commercial, and all. There's no service at all. Right. So uh, you have a strong service team, right? Yeah. So what made you to build that strong service team? Well, we see that in the end, your best. Um, Look, I mean, it's an ethical question too, right? Number one is ethical. Do you want to give the customer a good product and good service? And we do. Uh, secondly, if your you're satisfied customer is your best salesman. So we want our customers to be happy. We don't want people to be, you know, to not be happy with their system. So we try to go the extra mile to make sure it's well serviced. If it's well serviced, the customer is happy, we're happy. It's perfect. And find it gigawatts in 2030. Yeah. And what are the challenges? Yeah, we have the set targets, but you have a lot of hurdles to reach there. I think the main issue India faces is that the central government can keep putting out targets, but the states decide the electricity policy. And from where I sit, there's a big disconnect between those central government targets and the reality on the ground with the states. Hopefully the policies will sort out, especially the federal we, system. I think we need a lot more intervention by the central government to support the states to move in the same direction. It's, you can't just set a target and then just say, guys, do what you want. And uh, InterSolar and Smartery, what are your takeaways from here? Is it like positive? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good. It's always, InterSolar is always good, uh, but there's a lot fewer people this year, which I think tells us about the downturn in the industry. So, you know, I think um, we're, let's look for next year. Let's see if it uh, picks up. Thanks, uh, right. Damien. Thanks right. for speaking to Smart Sustain. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. Sure.